Love Healing Hearts, Pat Love back. Listen, we're going to continue with this subject. But on this one, we are going to read from Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 18, working our way down to verse 21, which is only four short verses. Now, after that, Pat's two cents. Now, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And the Bible goes on to describe what the works of the flesh are. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. How many of you hate people of other races? Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Now, if I was to do this in sign language, this is a good way to describe uh, wrath and strife. About the way some of y'all look and act. Okay. Uh, seditions, heresies. Verse 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things, listen to that, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's something. Now, the reason I leave you with that is because a lot of times we think that because we're saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a, with a mighty burning fire, and we are uh, faithful church goers, and we, we witness for the Lord, and we carry our Bibles everywhere we go, because that's the sword of the Spirit, and we are working with the Word of God to win the lost at every call. I mean, come on, you know, list goes on. We can go on and on with all that church and Christian babble. And we can glory hallelujah and praise God and and shun that rabaha and in tongues and and go through all these spiritual gyrations. You let somebody cross you in that parking lot. You let somebody get on your nerves at the grocery store. And in two seconds flat, you could be cussing somebody up one end and down the other. Before you know it, it's out there. Everybody's heard you. You have made a total fool of yourself. But you think you're going to heaven because you're under the dispensation of grace. Well, grace ain't no fool. And God has standards. One thing, hypocrites Liars and phonies will not enter into the kingdom of God. So give up on the heaven thing if you're not going to clean that up. Now, we know sometimes old habits are hard to die. But God knows if you're fighting the habit or if you really don't care. And whenever it's convenient, give somebody the finger Tell somebody to drop dead, go to hell, whatever you want to say. You feel like you got the right to say it. But you are a representative of God. You are supposed to be an ambassador. Well, even ambassadors for other countries don't let their behind show like we cheapen our representation of the kingdom of God. And then we wonder why people don't want to get saved. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. You just cussed me out. You just told me what to do with that and, and where to shove it. <laughs> and I'm supposed to want your Christianity. You gotta be kidding me. Huh. I'm doing fine with all my sin. What do I need you or your God for? You ain't got no standard. You, you live worse than I do. Now, 
you don't understand what a crippling thing that is. There are people out there who really are seeking and they really are searching, wondering if God is real, if, if being in the body of Christ really means something or is it just another social club? And if you're walking around doing the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing, and one minute you are uh, in, in the church and you're holy and sanctified and prayerful and oh, and just so kind and giving and beautiful, but then you get home. And the first thing your husband makes you mad or your children make them make you mad and you cuss their, their, their skin, their clothes off their back. You have a hissy fit and you're throwing things and you're telling them what to do and where to go and how not to be in your face and how they make you sick and you wish they were never born and he ain't even a man and who told you you were a man, you ain't nobody, and blah, 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 what that. Hell, I was thinking when I married you, I, I, that was the biggest mistake I ever made. And what the heck did I have you kids for? I mean, oh, you really think that somebody wants a piece of your religion when you act like that? Come on, think about it now. Would you want somebody handing you medicine? Out of a spoon that somebody just picked up out of the gutter? Would you put that in your mouth? Well, what makes you think people want that kind of Christianity? Well, you're all beautiful and sweet and holy and sanctified and <laughs> in church. And on Sunday or Saturday, wherever you go to church. And when you get home, you are hell on wheels, baby. You talk about a shrew. Talk about a witch. Uh, oh, my goodness. Can nobody get along with you? Everything they say, that's a problem. Everything that happens, got to be drama. Because of you. Because of your lip, your attitude, your anger. And then you get on the phone and talk about everybody that gets on your nerves. Sowing discord, slandering people's reputations, telling folks business. But you want to win your family to the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, right. You might as well just set the dog on church on fire and ha have a... Uh, 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 what do you call them things, a shotgun, and dare anybody to cross the line because you ain't going to let them into the kingdom. You kill them first because that's about what you're doing. Okay, I'm about done. Just think about that, you guys. How do you handle people? The bill comes in late or, or, or your husband has a problem on the job and you tell him it must be his fault? Or he tries to do something to please you, and you act like it ain't nothing? Oh, yeah, okay, you put it on over there. I'm busy right now. Whoa, what do you want from me? Huh? <sighs> That's love? Go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Go to that. <laughs> Excuse me. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. 1 Corinthians chapter... Oh, didn't even go to it. Chapter 13. We refer to that as the love chapter. And in case you guys don't really know what love truly is, you know what I love about the word? The Bible will tell you exactly what love is. So you don't have to play guessing games about it. And I'm going to read it to you. These are the characteristics and the behavioral patterns of true 
love. And if you're not adding up, if you don't look like this, something wrong with your love, baby. You need to go back to the bank and get your account checked. Because God will tell you where your deficits are, where your problems are. Here we go. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. Charity in the King James means love. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, you are nothing but noise, baby. You ever hear the expression empty cans make a lot of noise? Yeah, if you empty of love, baby, you ain't nothing but a whole lot of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Are you kind? Mm. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Are you arrogant? Are you a bit on the uh, self-centered, conceited side? Anyway, moving right along. Does not behave itself unseemly. You going off here, going off, flying off the handle, drama here, drama there, cussing here, blowing up there. Oh, come on. That's called unseemly. And the Bible says, doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. You got to have it your way all the time. You controlling people. You controlling men. That It's your way or the highway. That is not love is not easily provoked. Ooh, we just got to cover in that. Thinketh no evil, and y'all talking evil, so you know you're thinking evil. Okay. Rejoices not in iniquity. Ooh, he got his. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad he needed his behind whoop. I hope he loses his house. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part. <laughs> and we prophesy in part. Those of us who have all the gifts of the Spirit working in the Holy Ghost and we're really all that in the bag of chips, all of that you get, you're still getting it in part. You never get the whole picture, no matter how good you think you are. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I fought as a child. Some of y'all still act like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know only in part. I added the only. But then shall I know even also as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Modern day terms, the greatest of these, the most valuable is love. God bless you. Let's see where this takes your life as you think on these things. Amen.